All right, I want to put together instructional videotape on how to skin out a deer. Uh, new Louisiana law, you can't bring the brains or spinal cord back into the state from another state. So uh, we're going to show you how to do it in the field. Uh, you can do it yourself, and that way it saves you a little money. You could pay another tax to do it for you, or you could do it and you get to save uh, freezer space. First off, uh, you need to get you a, uh, a little tape measure. You can get them at Walmart. And this is what the measurements you want on a deer. You want to take from the corner of the, nose, uh, the, corner of the eye to the tip of the nose and record that measurement. This one is seven inches even. Uh, Louisiana deer, most of them are seven. You know, you get to the Midwest, you can get some bigger heads. Uh, the next measurement we're gonna take is around, around the neck, but we're gonna take that after we take the hide off so we can get the meat measurement, because that's what the taxidermist is replacing is the meat. I use a, uh, a scaffold blade. You can get these uh, at Havilons or really any taxidermy uh, supply house. And I use a 22 style blade. You can use a sharp knife, whatever you're comfortable with. This is just what I use. Blades are interchangeable, so I can take them on and off as I need to. I'm gonna show you uh, two ways we're gonna do it. We're gonna do this one the way I do them in the shop for a short incision. I'm going to cut this deer from here to here and skin it out. Then I'm gonna take the horns off and then I'm gonna skin it out like it didn't have any horns, like it was a doe or something. Uh, the other way you can do it is make a Y where you come here to here and you come down, then you don't have to cut the horns off. You can get the head out, cut the horns off later. Myself as a taxidermist, I like as little sewing as possible. Uh, I know old school, they cut them all the way down the back, but this way we only have one thing to sew up and uh, it just seems to work better and easier for me. We're gonna start and lift this nose up and we're gonna start cutting right here by the edge of the mouth. We're gonna come all the way down. Go through the cartilage of the nose, just straight back. Once you get back a little ways here, you can kinda just slice it right here. and you're past the nose now. Shortcuts work better. If you are to cut a hole, it'll be a small one. Just keep on coming back. Do both sides kind of even. pulling as I go. We're fixing to come to the tear ducts and I like to at least reach the tear ducts coming this way. It's less easy to cut a hole in the tear ducts than if you're coming from the other way. Everybody can see right here. I'm, fi I'm not there yet but I'm fixing to be there right in this area here. I'm going to show you when I get it free what we're looking for. Kind of pulling back as I go, and now I've got that tear duct freed up. You see right through here, this is where the tear duct was, and now it's free. If you do cut a hole in the tear duct, it's not, it's not that big a deal, but let's try not to cut any holes. Do a few deer, take your time, and you'll get quicker and better with each deer. Elk have uh, large deep tear ducts and most times a lot of people are going to cut holes in those because they do go so deep but uh, it's not a big deal because as a taxidermist a lot of times I cut some of those tear ducts off it's just way too much to tuck. Now I'm going to go to the bottom lip grab it kind of like I grab a large mouth bass just pull away cut up here by the teeth and I'm going to do this basically the same thing I did on the top I'm going to do on the bottom Not worried about keeping all the meat on the skull. 
it's okay if I if I leave some meat on the skin. Taxidermists can can get it off. That's the back corner of the mouth. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And that's about as far as you need to go. Uh, you can work in here a little bit if you want. It's not a big deal either way. You can work it down here a little bit more if you want. It gets kind of tight. You don't want to cut a hole. So if you're concerned about that, just stop right there and you're good. And I'm going to flip the deer over, and this is where we're going to make our, our incision back here. Uh, I'm going to get a new blade. That's what I like about these. Gets dull, get a sharp one. I'm going to start down here at the bottom here. I try to cut up to try to cut less hair. And I'm just try not to keep try not to pick your knife blade out of it and put it back in. Uh, you want a smooth cut if you can get it. You don't really want a jagged one. Kind of parting the hair. all the way to the base of the antler. See right here to the base. Make sure we get that to the base. Same thing on the other side. way to the base again here and I'm going to skin it just a little bit then I'm going to go around it with a screwdriver and pry the hide away from the antlers and I take a screwdriver and put it right in here and I'm going to basically just go around the edge of it just to free it loose uh, be careful prying this way. You can chip the horns, the antlers. Some people cut, cut this away. I just, I like to pry it. It's all kind of what you get used to. It's not the uh, there's not the only way to do it. It's just the way that works best for me. the back side sometimes they go all the way around the front way it's easy if I hit some resistance I'll just come from the back side and do the same thing until I kind of meet in the middle Usually the older, the bigger the buck, it's usually tougher to get around the antlers of young deer prize off fairly easy. You see I've got this one free all the way around it now. I'm going to do the same uh, to the other side. Got that side free. 
Now I'm going to skin it down a little bit, and uh, like I say, if you want to, you could cut you could cut this down, and you could get the whole cape off. Then cut the antlers off later. I like to go ahead and get them now, keep my incisions short. Kind of pulling away so I can see I'm not cutting any hide. Don't need a lot of room. The more the better. As long as you're not cutting a hole in it. I'm going to go straight down on the edge of the skull and cut this ear right off at the ear canal, the base of the ear canal. Just a minute, I'm going to show you. You can see in there, the base is right down in there. Just a minute, you'll be able to see a little bit better when I get some a uh, little bit of working room here. Pull it back, and I'm just kind of skinning away. Do the same thing on this side. I'm going to even come down the neck a little bit here. I'm going to try to get that ear canal where you can see it. If you can see it right there, I've, I've cut it loose right there, right along the skull. Alright, now I've got it freed up, so now I'm going to take my little saw, uh, oscillating saw you can get. You can buy them at Harbor Freight for about 40 bucks. You can buy a better one at Home Depot, but either one of them works. They even got um, cordless ones if you're out in the field that work. Just a little bit slower because they don't have quite as much power. Uh, this won't cut you, so it's not really going to cut the hide. You'd have to work to really cut that hide. But it will cut the bone, so I'm just going to go straight across the front, straight across the back, and underneath the side here. And I'm going to pop these horns right off. Then I'm going to skin this deer out. Uh, like it didn't have any antlers. Sometimes this saw doesn't want to cut any meat that's right there. Uh, to make it a little easier, you can make a little incision in this meat so that it just gets down to the bone. Uh, or you can sit there and just keep on and it'll finally cut it.
meat's the only thing that's holding it now, so. And we got the antlers off. Uh, typically now, you can do this now or later, you're gonna, you're gonna just cut this meat off. Uh, kind of dulls your blade, cutting the bone, but you'll just cut this meat off, click, clean these antlers up. Uh, you can take some borax, you get at Walmart if you want. It's just a bug proofer, uh, and it helps to dry it out a little bit, and you can scrape it and get it fairly clean. It's not, not that important. The important thing is that we get the cape and the antlers, and we can transport it back. Or if you're on a hunting trip out of state, it's easier to find a place to put just the hide than the hide and the antlers. Now we're at this point, we're going to turn this inside out. Here, let me show you one note real quick. This guy, when he skinned this out, he tubed it out. He tubed this out, and that's fine. Uh, if you do cut this, which makes it easier, if you cut down the back side of the leg where the white and the brown hair meets, not on the front side, because that's on the mount, but the back side, you can come down and it's just easier to skin out. Uh, but if you tube it out, you're not going to go wrong if you don't cut it all. If you cut it, cut it on the back side of the legs. There's nothing worse than getting a nice pretty cape in and someone's cut it right down the front. I'm just going to work it back. Sometimes you can pick it up and kind of shake it down. I'm just going to start skinning right here. I'm now I'm trying to leave as much meat on here as I can without cutting the hole. When they when they skin it out, they left some meat. I'm not really worried about that, but I don't want to keep I don't want to leave any more because I want to get an accurate measurement of the meat on here. And if half of it's on the cape, then you're not going to get an ac accurate measurement. But I'd rather someone bring me a deer with a lot of meat left on the on the cape than have wood bring me one with no meat but a bunch of holes in it. So I can remeasure if I need to. It's not a big deal. I like to get the meat measurement as possible. If not, hey, I can measure it after I, before and after I tan it. I'm just going to work all the way around. I haven't tried it, but uh, I'm sure you could do what I did prior to uh, skinning the deer out, the whole deer, hanging the whole deer up, and it's all hanging upside down, and you could finish it that way. I'm going to shake it down again. Now I can see the air canal here where I cut it earlier, so I know I'm real close to getting this thing freed over his head. Always stay closer to the meat instead of up on the skin. Always kind of cut behind it. to the eye socket and I can see that and feel it. You can see this right through here, you know you're getting real close. So I want to cut behind it and on the sides of it until I can see exactly what's going on with it, until I can tell where I'm at. And I can see I've got an opening, that's the high eye hole. So I didn't cut a hole yet, doing real, but I can put my finger in here and pull back to make sure I stay behind it. side. Starting to get a hole right there where it's supposed to be. 
Stick my finger in, pull up, stay behind the skin. Kind of freed up there, so now I'll just cut it loose right here. So now you're done. Turn this cape inside out. I'm going to get my meat measurements. I'm going to get right up here by the jawline. And it's 19 and, and, and 3 quarters. I'm, I'm going to say I can make that 20 pretty easy. It's real close. And I'm going to come an inch or two down, and it's 22. If I can get even a third one, I'm going to do that. It's 24. So, night, so 20, 22, and 24. 7 was my nose to eye that I wrote down. So what you would write on the cape is 7, 20, 22, 24, and the taxidermist would know uh, which measurements you had. Then to freeze the cape, I always just wrap them like this. I put the ears in the middle, and I just roll them to keep air from getting the no to the nose and the ear in the freezer. And I put it in a bag, and then that's it.